Hello, this is Simon and today I'm going to be talking through how I put this scene together in Lightwave 3D. Um, it's a very very simple scene with some instancing and some displacements so hopefully it won't take too long so let's get started. So the first thing I want to do is create a texture to use as a base texture on my uh, terrain. So I'll uh, just make a 1k new document there making sure that my colors are set to black and white and then I'll come up here to filter render and clouds so what that's done is create a perfectly seamless texture which is going to be really really useful when I do some texture baking shortly so let me save that out uh, I've already saved this before but we will save a new version this will be clouds 1 Okay, and then we can create some variations from this. So we can again come up to render difference clouds, and you can see there it creates a slightly different effect. So that could be nice layered up on my terrain. So let's get this saved. That'll be clouds two. Then often it's quite nice to, if you press Control F, you can create some variations on that. So that looks quite nice as well so I'll save that and those three textures will form the basis for my uh, my terrain so let's get over to Modeler right so here we are in Modeler and I'm going to start modeling the basis for my uh, terrain so what I want to do is create a 3 by 3 meter flat plane and I'm going to give it some segments so I'm going to give it 3 in X and 3 in Z okay so this center square is exactly 1 meter um, and you'll see why shortly so what I'm going to do is select the center polygon and I'm just going to give that in UV map and that's going to be in Y so hit create and then I'm going to sub patch my object. I'm going to press Ctrl D to freeze it. Then sub patch it again and Ctrl D again. So that's given my mesh a fair bit of detail there now. So I'll sub patch that, hit save, and send to layout. Okay, so in layout now I've got um, my three textures I created earlier in Photoshop and I'm going to start using those to displace my mesh so let's turn on VPR and select my object properties and under deform I'm just going to hit the T for texture on displacement there uh, it's going to be on Y and I'm going to leave that up at 1, 1, 1 on there and that's going to correspond to the UV mapped uh, area that I created earlier. So essentially the, the area around the UV mapped area is going to act, act as a kind of bleeding area so that when I bake to texture I don't get the, uh, the black of the background or whatever bleeding into my image so I know that my my bake texture is going to be seamless. So I'm going to apply my clouds there and let's have a look here it's obviously way too strong so let's point 0.2 we'll give that some smoothing as well let's turn our shows off And we'll crank this up to something interesting. Okay. So you can see there already, you've got kind of a nice sort of terrain looking thing happening already. So in order to see what that's going to look like as a, a baked surface, I'm going to select my camera, P for properties, and I'm going to just create a 1K texture. Select my surface baking camera. 
So that's going to be my terrain mesh, my UV uh, map that I created. If I hit six now, you'll see this is this is what we're going to bake. Um, because we know that the that the clouds textures are perfectly repeatable, we know that this is going to be repeatable as well. So let's just set this to be uh, one meter. We know we know we're going to get everything covered in that. Okay. Um, right. So let's close this, and then we can start layering up some of this deformation. Um, let's add another image map, and we'll try clouds two this time. In Y. And I'm going to make that additive. It's going on top of the. Uh, we could make this 0.5 meters, so we we know it's going to repeat within the square four times. Then maybe that's not great. We'll leave that at one, and we'll dial it back slightly. Something like that is fine. Okay, that'll do for now. Um, let's start applying some color. So again, we're going to use our planar map in Y, and we'll use our clouds. And if I add a layer, a gradient, I'm going to make this a sort of mud kind of color. I don't know, something like that. And we can use our alpha on that. So that starts to give us some color variation there. And obviously the base color here is gray that you can see coming through. So we can make this a more natural kind of green color. Then we can add some more of these layers and start building this up. Let's try cloud two now. We'll go for a overlay maybe. So you can see, you can start to get some interesting effects quite quickly and you see how well it repeats as well. So if we have a look in the surface baking camera now, we can start to tweak our lights to get something a bit more pleasing. So You can also see here that we've got some kind of artifacts in the bake. Um, so the way to deal with that is to just tweak the offset uh, in, in the surface baking camera. So I'm going to set that to 2 meters now. And that's done absolutely nothing. Perhaps too high. There we go. Yeah, just way too high. Okay, so we're starting to get some interesting effects on that now, which is kind of terrainy. So, what we can do is start to perhaps add some specular, maybe use one of the uh, one of the cloud maps to control the specular and glossiness. And we can add another layer here with the image map 0.25. We'll try the clouds three and we'll just try a few of these just to see what it's quite interesting.
Okay, so you can keep tweaking till your heart's content, till you've got something that's uh, that's going to be nice. So I'll just for now just render this out, and we'll get moving with the next stage of the tutorial. Okay, so here's my new render. Um, it might look a little bit different from the previous one, uh, thanks to a nice crash there, but uh, it's probably because I'm recording. Um, so I'm going to save this out, and we can start using this texture on our main terrain. Right, so here we are back in Modeler, and I've subdivided my mesh. Uh, I'm now at about, what's this, 26,000 polys. So I'm going to use a neat little tool um, for um, displacing meshes in Modeler. Um, let's go Modify, Move, and I'm going to click this Use Texture. I'll select my texture and I'm going to load my image. I think it was Terrain Bake. Just make sure that my grid snaps off. Then, as I slide, <laughs> making sure you need to put it in white. Okay, so as I slide up, I get this quite nice texture effect. This looks pretty neat. Um, so, I bring up my surface editor now. When I apply, remember leaving this at 111. Uh, when I apply that in Y, get a really nifty effect with our bake texture repeating perfectly. So let's just dial that back a bit and save, and we'll send that over to layout. Okay, so. Here we've got my scene. Um, this is the the baked displacement as well as the baked texture. Um, you can see I've loaded in a grass mesh. This was from the uh, advanced placement content. Um, great plugin. Um, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to start displacing this again. So um, if we bring up my displacement. You can see there I've just got a turbulence. This is pretty much default settings in Y. Uh, I'll just turn this on and you can see we've got some quite interesting effects already there. Which looks like a really nice sort of hillside or whatever. I could actually dial back the uh, the scale on that point seven maybe. I'm just dialing back the scale just to see if it sort of flattens it out a little bit. Something like that is quite nice. And then we can start adding some bump maps as well. I've got a few added here already just to save a bit of time. Um, so here we've got the, the actual terrain bake texture that I used before. Again with the... Um, one in X, one in Y, one in Z, and let's have a look at how that looks in VPR. And then I just added a crumple just to break that surface up a little bit. And then again, I've made a, uh, in the surface editor, I've just made a, a copy of the uh, my baked texture. So using the clone instance, and this one is now a black and white image because I've just tweaked the saturation there. You can see that. And 
I've just set this, the scale to be half on that one to, just to give it some variation. Here, we, here you can see in VPR that it's looking a really nice scene already, uh, even without any grass or anything. So I've just added a, a uh, one of the free downloads from hdriskies.com and uh, tweak the gamma in there just to um, give it a bit of a bit of a boost there. The default settings on that was pretty dark. So I've just pumped that there. Crank that up to three actually just to give it some brightness. And then if we just go into uh, OpenGL overlay uh, I've got my light here which is kind of matched to the direction of the uh, the sun there okay so let's have a look at adding some instances to the scene I've got um, literally two objects in here we've got the terrain and then we've got some wild grass um, so I'm going to select my train, terrain model and I'm going to add an instance generator. So in here I've given it some, set it to be surface and uh, I've given it some random scale and some random rotation as well. So if I just, uh, let's set this to be front face wireframe. We'll start cranking this up now. I'm going to try something like 2000. It's going to chug a little bit now. Changing the scale of my uh, original mesh there. Let's get VPR on and see what that's looking like. So that's pretty much it, really. Um, obviously, tweaking the settings for the uh, the scales of the the objects and so on. And I did a little bit of color correction in Photoshop and added a a lens flare. But you can see how simple it is just to get something going in Lightwave which is one of the things I like about it. Um, it's pretty quick and dirty but you can create some great stuff. Okay, cheers guys.